There are new reports this morning. Russia's nuclear forces are holding drills northeast of Moscow. That's according to the Interfax News Agency, citing the Russian Defense Ministry. About 1,000 service members of these strategic missile forces are involved in intensive maneuver actions on combat patrol routes in the Ivanovo region. They're reportedly using more than 100 pieces of equipment, including Yars Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Launchers. Joining us now, contributor writing for The Atlantic, Tom Nichols. His latest piece out today is titled, We Have No Nuclear Strategy. The U.S. cannot keep ignoring the threat these weapons pose. Tom, good morning. So first of all, what do you make about this news out of the Russian defense ministry? Is it anything more than saber rattling? And then what do you say we're unprepared for the threat they pose? I don't know uh, that the exercises uh, around Ivanova really matter that much. This was something Putin ordered at the very beginning of the of the war, when he invaded um, Ukraine, he ordered um, Russian nuclear forces to go to special combat maneuvers, uh, combat stats, whatever that might mean. Um, and so, some of this, I think, is um, just to, just for show. I don't think it has a specific threat in it for the United States. Um, but we've had a long vacation from thinking about nuclear weapons. Um, and I think one of the things you saw with a lot of the debate about what the United States should do um, to help Ukraine and, and what American and NATO policy should be about this war was conducted as though nuclear weapons either don't exist or aren't very dangerous or that the danger of escalation to a general nuclear conflict um, you know, just wasn't a particularly worrisome thing. And I think that's because we've now had many Americans who for 30 years have lived in a world um, where the United States was the most powerful country in the world and that the Cold War equation of mutual assured destruction wasn't something we really had to think about. Well, it's back and we have to think about it. Hey, Tom, your piece, in your piece, you mentioned the perils of the past and the fact that perhaps Ronald Reagan was the last president to really talk extensively about the dangers of nuclear war. I'm old enough that my knees still hurt from diving under the desk during civil defense drills uh, in the late 1950s or middle 1950s. So my question to you is a phrase that's been mentioned quite often, more often than not, in the last two to three weeks, limited nuclear war. What would that be? Um, limited nuclear war is a phrase that we use to convince ourselves that there is such a thing as limited nuclear war. Uh, there are folks who study uh, nuclear weapons. I worked with many of them over the years who believe that you could engage in small exchanges, you know, again, small, being defined in nuclear terms of uh, five or 10 or 15 um, small um, battlefield nuclear weapons. The problem is that um, the all of the kind of elegant plans that go along with all of that um, can unwind pretty quickly. Nuclear weapons, would, the use of a nuclear weapon, even one now, would change the world. We'd be living in a different phase of history um, 10 seconds after the detonation, no matter where it was used or no matter how large it was. And then um, the, the the, the, the steps that bring us toward chaos, where we end up thinking about having to engage in a strategic exchange because we're so worried about being struck first, um, but, you know, those steps become pretty fast and pretty short, particularly when you're dealing with um, a very fragile and brittle command structure like the one in Russia, which is headed by a paranoid, delusional dictator. Um, but the whole point of these things is not to use them and to and to deter their use. Um, but limited nuclear war scenarios back when you know you, when you and I were hiding uh, under our desks, Mike, um, those were attempts to I, I think largely to bluff our opponent to say, um, you know, we could use these things and be very stoic about it and use them in onesies and twosies. I, I personally don't think that's possible. Hey, Tom, you detail in the piece and on shows like this uh, about the nuclear threat that Russia poses, but where else should the U.S. be concerned? What other nations, rogue states, might uh, pose a threat with this? And what about non-state actors, like terrorist groups? How great of a risk is it that someone could get their hands on something, a device like this and be willing to use it? 
the interesting thing is that when this holiday from thinking about nuclear war began, the Chinese weren't much of a factor. They weren't really on the map as a nuclear power. They are now. They can pretty much destroy the United States. Um, the North Koreans were a notional threat. You know, we used to, I mean, it was, those were the good old days when we talked about, well, one day if the North Koreans ever get a bomb, I suppose we're going to have to deal with that problem. Well, it's been, you know, 15 years now since that happened. Um, rogue states um, are, are like North Korea and new nuclear powers like China are a problem. I worry less, and maybe this is the one place I, I can try and be a little sanguine. It seems like non-state actors have actually had a pretty hard time um, getting their hands on fissile material and creating a, a terrorist bomb. And in part, that's because they would need the, the assistance of an existing state. And right now, none of the nuclear powers want to get caught with their hand in that terrorist cookie jar. Um, it's, t it's difficult. It's not difficult to create a crude nuclear weapon. It's difficult to get to all through all the steps that will get you to finally creating a crude nuclear weapon, getting the, the appropriate fissile material, getting the engineered parts, and so on. But um, it, it'll, I mean, it's just a matter of time before somebody can do it. So, you know, we do, we have to think about that. Tom's new piece, We Have No Nuclear Strategy, The U.S. Can't Keep Ignoring the Threats These Weapons Pose, is online this morning for The Atlantic. Tom Nichols, thanks so much, Tom. We appreciate it.